I was talking to him about the <laughs> 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 So I had an old Mac. But he like researched it called four or five different places. and caught all the prizes. Turned out this man contacted us. Yeah, you guys play Yeah. No, that would have been. Is that because it's. No. Yeah, because that's. Yeah. We could run it with me. We could run it with Michael. You're live on camera now. You're watching Master Craftsman at work. The job's on the line. You may never work again in this town. He's going to never work in this town again, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let the real craftsman take over. Girl with the new haircut. What? What was a great concept? <laughs> I was trying to, you know, save us a double whammy. Okay, we're speeding. Settle, please. In five, four, three, two. Come on, Gracie. Let's go. Freeze. Change of plans. You're taking your little friend Gravity. Forget it. We're going to the park by ourselves. I forbid it. Forbid? Is that the F word on here? That's the F word? That's what they feel. I order you to do it. You can order one salad, but you cannot order me. Who's the nanny here anyway? I was there when Mr. Jones was born here with you. In school. <laughs> Please, ladies. Isn't there a more grown-up way to settle your differences? We need mud wrestling. Um... Actually.
Right. Yes. And that's the only time it works. Bell, tape's rolling, let's hold the chit chat, settle in. Okay, here we go. In five, four, three, two. Come on, Grace Keep moving. Great. Change your plans. A little break. All right. Okay. Okay, still rolling. Count them in. Wait, you're saying I'll count you in. They're adjusting in it. Okay, here we go. In a five, four, three, two. Come on, Gracie. Hit moment. Great. Change the plans. Frank Bradley Jr. is going to the park with you. Forget it. We're going to the park by ourselves. I forbid it. Forbid? Oh, is that the F word? That's the F word? What's the big deal? I order you to do it. You can order a salad but you cannot order me. Who's the nanny here, anyway? I was there when this child was born. Where were you? In high school. You know the ironic thing is I don't even like the park. <laughs> ladies, ladies, isn't there a more grown-up way to settle your differences? I'm thinking literacy. Actually, there is. I'm telling Maxwell on you. Not if I get there first. Brighton Walker! And we're clear. Okay, let's repo down. It's on. Hi, backstage here at uh, Culver City Studios. Okay, take two. Hi, Barry Mujay here from Metro Cafe, and we are at Culver City Studios in Hollywood, California, backstage uh, for the show, TV show The Nanny. This is the set where The Nanny is taped. This is actually um, the living room. And uh, they are doing a scene, uh, the, the whole episode is called um, A Day in the Park. So um, we're going to show you some footage of that and, uh, and uh, tell you a little bit about it. So come along. Okay, we'll do it. Cut it off, turn it off. All right, good. Mm -hmm. Davis. Davis. Daniel Davis, yes. Yeah. Too bad, Ray. Okay. Hi, Benny Mujay here for Metro Cafe, and we are on the set at, of The Nanny. Let's do this again. Hi, Benny Mujay here for Metro Cafe, and we are uh, uh, inside Culver City Studios in Hollywood, California, and we are on the set of The Nanny. And standing right here with me is Daniel Davis, who plays the butler, Niles. That's right. Uh, no, uh, uh, Daniel, Daniel, I'm going to give you the mic, and you're going to give us a personal tour uh, for our viewers in Canada Okay. for uh, this uh, beautiful hit show. Great, thank you. Well, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to meet you all. Uh, this is the, uh, the living room of the Sheffield House, and this is kind of the, uh, uh, the one set that we have that, that sort of stays up week in, uh, every episode, but other sets in, get changed around as the needs, you know, for the, for the individual episodes that we do. You've caught us on a time when we have just finished our camera blocking on Friday afternoon, and the audience is coming in here in about a half an hour to watch us tape this week's episode, and we've been doing rewrites and uh, setting up new shots all afternoon since about 9 o'clock this morning, so this is a long day for us. Uh, unfortunately, most of the set is buried, and you can't really see it at the moment. In this particular episode, uh, Maxwell Sheffield is opening a new play, and so we had to have a bar, a sort of theater bar, and uh, we have something that's sort of similar to, you know, Sardis or Jimmy Ray's in New York, and uh, with the cartoons and the caricatures of actors and famous people. And uh, if we keep coming this way, we will come down to the kitchen, which is really the, the heartbeat of the Sheffield. This is Niles' domain. And this is the heartbeat of the Sheffield household, I like to think. Uh, I can see here uh, there's a little uh, 
picnic basket, apparently. Yes, there's an uh, involved uh, in the episode tonight. Uh, Fran is taking Gracie to the uh, on a picnic to Central Park, and she's taking the son of the drama critic uh, from the uh, from one of the major papers in New York, and uh, trying. Uh, Miss Babcock, the dreaded Miss Babcock, is trying to uh, ingratiate herself with the critic. So that's what this is all about. But anyway, we. Um, I don't know what nights we're on in uh, it's Canada. Night. It's on it's Wednesday CBS. night. Oh, great. So we're doing, uh, we're doing very well. Uh, we're up against some pretty stiff competition, some shows that have been uh, you know, around for a couple of years and, and have found their audience. But uh, we're building as we go, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to a second season, I believe. We're pretty sure that we're going to be back for another year. So things are going very well for us. You know, it's... it's tough, but, you know, Fran uh, Drescher and her husband, Peter Mark Jacobson, are, uh, uh, and our other producers, Rob Sternen and Prudence Frazier, are very um, committed to trying to give the audience a very uh, smart show each week, so that the humor is, uh, it appeals to younger children in the family, but there's enough edge to the humor that the grown-ups in the audience can enjoy it as well. And uh, it's pretty smart, pretty sophisticated stuff for, you know, and we're working very hard to try and keep it that way. Um, but it, it, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a battle week in and week out. So it's like doing a, a, a new little one-act play every week, which really starts on Monday and goes through a whole week of rewriting and revision. And right up until tonight, when the audience is coming in, we're still changing lines and changing the situation a little bit. And so it's hard work. So now, the, the accent that you have on the show, this yeah. British butler right. image is this something that um you know butlers normally have or is well you know the the idea of playing the english butler it, it's a character that's like been around forever and uh it's a fairly stock character in in the lexicon and uh the the, the servant with the snide remarks and the rude remarks goes back to roman comedy practically so to try and find a new slant on him and to give him some sort of, uh, to give him a little wisdom around the house, to make him seem like the person who kind of uh, uh, knows what's really going on and, uh, and uh, is able to punch the balloons and puncture a few balloons and, and so forth as we go along. That's what I'm trying to work on. The British part of it, I mean, it's very... Uh, it's interesting for me because I am from Arkansas and I was born and raised in That's the South. That's why I asked this yeah. question. Yeah, and uh, so the accent is something that uh, I have sort of made up and put together out of you know uh, other actors that I've listened to or worked with all over the, all through the years, and so. It's really kind of a made-up sound. I think if this plays in England, everybody's going to say, "Where is he supposed to be from?" But uh, I, I can't do it with this with a southern thing because that that wouldn't have worked at all. But uh, you know, it's it's great. It's a great challenge for me because it also allows me to uh, to play other roles. Um, you know, movies of the week and other characters that are like 180 degrees from Niles, which is always fun for an actor. That's right. So how many episodes have you taped so far? So far, this ep I believe tonight is episode number 17, and we have uh, 24 shows that we're doing this year. So I don't know exactly when you'll be seeing this in Canada, but we work here until the 7th of May, and that finishes our season. And then we come back uh, shortly after the 4th of July and begin work on next season, we hope. Fingers so, crossed. So you're going to be on a hiatus for a while. Any plans for your hiatus? Well, I've been trying to decide. I, I come from the theater, and I've spent uh, most of my life working in the theater. And so that urge to go back and do a play is always with me. But this time we only have eight weeks, which is very hard to find the right place to go and, uh, and to give a commitment that is that brief. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. There's a big part of me that wants to uh, just go to the south of France and sit for eight weeks, and uh, so that may happen too. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, we would really like to thank you for very much for giving us the time. Well, thank you for coming. And, uh, My pleasure. I hope everybody in Canada will stay with us and keep watching the show, and, and uh, we definitely you know, will. thank you. Thank it's you nice much. to have you. Bye-bye. Daniel Davis, everyone. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thanks to meet you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Okay. Okay, I am good. You ready? Hi, I'm Daniel Davis. I play Niles, the butler on The Nanny. Join us this Saturday night for a behind-the-peak look at uh, the set here in Culver City, California. Metro Cafe, this Saturday. Thank you.